Have you ever wanted to climb Mount Everest? Me neither. But this is what it looks like when you climb Mount Everest now. Like, look at this long ass line. It looks like they're waiting at the DMV. See, this is why I don't climb Mount Everest. I mean, I could totally do it. <laughs> I just don't like the crowds, you know? Like, seriously, I don't even like waiting in line at Walmart. And I'm supposed to wait in line to climb a mountain? Could it be like Disneyland where they sell like a fast pass so I can just skip that line? Modern problems require modern solutions. Oh, but here's the craziest part. You wanna know how much it costs to climb Mount Everest? So with Sherpas and permits and all that, your average cost, $50,000. Oh, but here's the most depressing part. This is how it actually looks now because of all the trash people leave up there. Hey, Brandy, I think I done busted my stink bone. So imagine this. Imagine you're kayaking like out in the middle of the ocean and a whole ass whale just rolls up on you. I don't understand how people can be so calm in these situations. Like, I get that whales are supposed to be like gentle creatures, like they're like the Tom Hanks of the ocean, but f all that. I mean, look at that thing. That thing could probably fart and knock you out of the water. I mean, do whales even fart? I, I don't know. Ask your mother. Look at that. Like, look at the size of that fin. How could you not be scared? Like, I think people who say they wouldn't be scared are liars. So this guy just walks into someone's house preaching. Gods in which you are worshiping are false gods. If you do not repent of please, your sins, accept please, Jesus into please. your heart. I gotta admit, walking into a stranger's house is a good way to meet Jesus. Like, I don't care which god you worship or whatever. I, don't walk into a stranger's house and try and convert them, you psychopath. And it's actually funny he's trying to convert pagans because a lot of Christian practices actually have pagan origins. Now, I'm not trying to be mean here, but I've seen this guy before and he's kind of a turd. Like, the stuff he preaches about women has got big alpha bro podcast energy. Women are not supposed to be speaking in churches and women are not supposed to be taking authority roles. Where have the men gone? Is there not a single man to preach or lead now? Also, the guy used to be really into trans and femboy until he found Jesus? For years upon years, I was watching transgender femboy and all that stuff. He also used to use Grindr to hook up with trans women. I used to go on Grindr all the time, looking for a to hook up with. And that wasn't like many, many years ago. This was in like 2022. Yeah, it's like a whole ass rabbit hole of gossip that I, I don't really want to get into. My point is this guy has no business walking into strangers' homes, telling them which gods to worship or what they should be doing with their lives. Okay, things pretty people can do that ugly people can't. Become a pop star. I mean, pop stardom in general is just for hot people. Like how many K-pop bands do you know where all the members look like Shrek? Dress like Shrek? I mean, attractive people could wear a freaking glad bag and people would say they got drip. Ugly people gotta dress their best all the time or they just look worse. Get help from a stranger. I broke down one time, wasn't no one helping my ugly ass. In fact, I think they invented AAA just for ugly people. Get served a drink at a crowded bar. If you are ugly at a crowded bar, the bartender is not looking your way. Might as well just go home and drink some, some diet water. Get out of a traffic ticket. There are actually studies on this. Conventionally attractive people people, when they get pulled over, they get fewer tickets. Work for tips. Man, I worked for tips for years. Wasn't no one tipping my ugly ass. <laughs> if you're ever walking along the beach and you find a jellyfish, don't hug it. <laughs> Wait. Yeah, that's what happens when you touch a jellyfish. Ow. See, then of course he jumps into the ocean where there might be more jellyfish. <laughs> I don't know why you'd want to pick up dead sea life, but apparently what he's shouting translates to I got an octopus. Sir, that is definitely not an octopus. I'm not a smart man. Wait. By the way, if you do get stung by a jellyfish, don't believe the psychopaths who tell you the cure is pee. It is not. Like, I don't even know how that myth got started, but I feel bad for all the people who just got peed on. Well, there's really only one thing you can do. What? What is it? You're gonna have to pee on it. <laughs> Salt water will actually likely help the pain, which is actually why the guy dove back in. Things that movies always get wrong. Okay, first we have crawling around in air conditioning vents. Most air conditioning vents aren't big enough to crawl around in. And if you did crawl in one, you'd come out looking like pig pen because they're filthy. Like, when's the last time you cleaned your air conditioning vent? <laughs> 
Silencers. You know that sound in movies that silencers make? Well, that sound is bull Like in real life, even with a silencer, guns are loud as f carry someone who's unconscious. Dead weight is freaking heavy. Like, have you ever tried to carry someone who's drunk and passed out? Like, you can't do it. Like, you have to basically drag them. Oh, but in the movies, we'll carry people with no problem. Jumping through glass. In the real world, if you jump through a pane of glass, it will slice you up. You'd have shards of glass in your eyes and in your nose. Not to mention, you would land on a pile of broken glass. Bad news, don't do it. Getting hit in the head and then just blacking out for a short period of time and waking up with no problem. Yeah, in the real world, that's called head trauma. When someone gets hit hard enough to black out, like, sometimes they lose the ability to speak. Sometimes they gotta go into physical therapy for, like, months. Hacking. Don't even get me started on hacking. I'm getting hacked. Oh, this is not good. We're using our connection to the AFIS data. So I make fun of America and Americans all the time, because, you know, I'm from there. But let's talk about some things America's actually good at. Entertainment. Like it or not, America is really good at entertainment. Our movies and TV shows are distributed all over the world. Like, you don't have to like all of it, but we make a ton of it. Think of all the iconic American characters that are instantly recognizable. Like this one, this one, this one, definitely these guys. The space program. America has a great space program. Like, we pretty much have the most active and productive space program in the world. We send billionaires to space. That's how productive our space program is. National parks. Apparently our national parks are exceptional. Like, I wouldn't know because I never leave my mom's basement, but the internet tells me we have excellent national parks. The World Series. You gotta admit, Americans dominate the World Series. Like, an American baseball team wins the World Series, like, every year. I'm curious, what do you think of people owning these? That's you. Okay, I think big cats are cool as hell. Like, I'm a big fan of Chester Cheetah, you know? Dangerously cheesy. But I have no idea why someone would want to own one. Like, you're not He-Man, bro. You don't need a tiger sidekick. Like, have you ever cleaned a cat's litter box? Yeah, now imagine cleaning up tiger turds. And they definitely shouldn't be taunting him like this. Compare a tiger paw to a human hand. That thing would murder the entire house. <laughs> He's gonna eat me! And I know what you're thinking. You're thinking, Ray, what kind of cat is this? All right, I got you. So this is actually the offspring of a lion and a tiger. Not a liger, but a tigon. And yeah, it's annoying that there's a difference between a liger and a tigon, but there is. And this is a tigon. Right, things about the 90s I don't miss. The internet. I mean, shit was slow, streaming wasn't reliable, and that god-awful sound that dial-up made? <laughs> <gasps> Good riddance. People showing up to your house unannounced. You remember when people used to just show up like, hey, wanna hang out? No, I'm trying to feed my Tamagotchi or whatever. I feel like everyone calls or texts beforehand now, which is a much better system. Blockbuster. Remember that? You'd drive to the store hoping they'd have the movie you want and you'd had like a day to watch it, otherwise they'd give you a late fee? Yeah, I don't miss that. Streaming movies anytime you want now is far superior. MTV. MTV, and terrestrial radio for that matter, basically used to decide what music would make it into the zeitgeist. And if that music sucked, too bad, you were stuck listening to it. And if there was a music video you wanted to see, you had to wait around the TV all day for it to come on. I hated it. I'm glad Spotify and YouTube exist now. Jinkos. Like what? Like what? I mean, I had a pair too, but like, what? What are restaurants even doing anymore? I hate this job. Yeah. I'm about to quit. Yeah. And I'm gonna tell you right now how I'm finna do it. Okay, but like, why? Honestly, I couldn't find a lot of information on this. I'm not sure if it's like a themed restaurant or like a pool wedding reception. But this is a terrible idea. Like, what if you drop your phone? And is the waiter like, would you like a refill of water? And then he just bends down and gets you <laughs> some. Come on, man, don't be eating in the pool. I pee in there. I'm just glad this is in Italy, because if this were like Florida, there'd be like stuff floating in the water. What would you do if you saw one of these in your house? <laughs> What in the Jurassic World is that? And I, for one, welcome our new insect overlords. What is that, the villain from Bugs Life? Why do I feel like he has his own social security number? Like, I'm not afraid of bugs, generally, but I don't need it to be the size of a human baby. Like, I want to ask how it got in the building, but clearly he kicked the door in. Things people think are dangerous that 
really aren't. Number five, the Bermuda Triangle. I was so scared of the Bermuda Triangle as a kid, even though I lived thousands of miles away in Oklahoma, but it's not more dangerous than any other part of the ocean. Number four, flying. There's very little risk in flying, unless you fly spirit, then you risk getting an ass whooping. Number three, sharks. Statistically, sharks aren't really all that dangerous. Like, they don't kill a lot of people. Like, I, I, would we get that idea from Jaws? I don't know. I swear it's a lie propagated by Big Dolphin. Like, the amount of humans in the world killed by sharks every year is like, Five, like in the entire world. Number two, Halloween candy. Like every year the local news is like panicking that uh, some psychopath is gonna put, I, I don't know, drag shows in your Halloween candy. It, it doesn't happen. Like there's all this crazy stuff going on in the world, but these people are worried someone's gonna poison their candy corn. And number one, turning the dome light on in your car while driving. Did everyone's parents decide to get together and lie to us about this? They said it was illegal to turn this on while you're driving. They said it was dangerous to turn this on while you're driving. That is nonsense. Bunch of liars. Imagine Imagine you walk into a gym and you see this guy. Sir, that is not the way bench press works. I mean, look at that. This dude can fart on his own neck. I throw my back out if I like yawn crooked and this guy can do this? I am impressed. So I had to look this guy up. His name is Serber and he's a Russian contortionist in Cirque du Soleil. But hey, man, good for him for making a career out of that. He seems like a really good guy. He seems like the kind of guy that would bend over backwards for you. Boo! This commercial blows my mind every time I see it. I love white. White is clean, white is pure, white is beautiful. Moss Beauty makes my skin whiter, healthier, younger looking. I'm at my most beautiful. I mean, it just, it blows my mind that there's such a huge market in like East and South Asia for skin lightening creams. And to be fair, it's not unlike the West where tanning and tanning beds are popular. People are trying to make themselves brown. <laughs> Like, can we just not be happy with our skin color? I mean, yeah, beauty standards are weird and they change depending on which time and geographical location you're in. I mean, beauty standards will never not be weird to me. But I would definitely never put out a commercial suggesting that one particular skin tone is cleaner or more pure than others. And I definitely, definitely wouldn't put this commercial out in the US. Can you imagine if this played in the US? People would lose their minds. Like white nationalists would have it on loop. White is clean. Why this pure? How bad do you want to own one of these? Rich people sh billionaire sh rich people sh trillionaire sh rich people sh gazillionaire sh Yeah, great, for all the times you've wanted to watch Jeopardy outside. All right, there are three reasons why I think this would fail. All right, one, your HOA would never approve this. I get a good approval before I plant petunias in my lawn and the HOA is supposed to approve a 144 inch TV in my backyard. Two, I don't want my neighbors knowing what I watch. Oh, look at that, honey, he's watching MILFs again. And three, wouldn't the heat just bake that TV or the cold or the rain or any kind of weather? Wouldn't that mess it up? So how much does this monstrosity cost? Well, it comes in at a whopping $298,000 plus installation. For $298,000, that thing needs to come out of the ground like a switchblade. Okay, songs that would play on repeat in hell. First up, we have Baby Shark. Just punch me right in the face. I know this song is for kids, but it is absolute torture for me. Imagine by Gal Gadot and other out of touch celebrities. Like I can never unsee that first time she sings Imagine. Imagine there's... <laughs> Scuttlebutt from The New Little Mermaid. Like I like everyone involved in this, but this song is still really grating. Take a whack, whack. That Mariah Carey Christmas song. This song isn't poorly written or anything, but if you don't hate this song, then you've never worked retail. Baby. Dookie Fresh by Your Favorite Martian. All right, look, we all agree that the guy who wrote this song is an absolute genius, but sometimes it feels like he's trying to troll his audience. All Star by Smash Mouth. Not a bad song, just overplayed. Samba. The song Michael Jackson and Paul McCartney did together, Girl Is Mine. Two of the greatest songwriters in the world come together and give us Girl Is Mine? I mean, maybe this wasn't hell worthy, but it was definitely disappointing. Whatever that one song was that Jake Paul did. Now this song is definitely hell worthy, but I will be the first to admit I am very jealous of those views. It's every day, bro. Gucci Gang by Lil Pump. Damn it, stop telling me this song slaps. It does not slap. Gucci Gang, Gucci Gang, Gucci Gang. It does whatever the opposite of slaps is. It, it, it hugs. This song hugs. <laughs> Are these restaurants going too far? <laughs> 
So this is obviously the kind of restaurant where the customer will cook the items themselves. Okay, do-it-yourself restaurants can be fun. Big shout out to Korean barbecue. They got it right. But I don't want to do it if it's pancakes, not if it's something that I could just easily make at home. I mean, at some point, you, the customer, you're just doing the restaurant's job for them. I mean, after you eat, do they make you go in the back and do your own dishes too? And since I'm basically the waiter before I leave, do I tip myself? What if I didn't give myself good service? And if there are no waitresses, who are the boomers going to sexually harass? This is broken. This system is broken. We need to stop believing in these things because they are just not true. The blood inside your body is blue, and then it turns red when you get cut and bleed out. It's not true. Your blood is red. It's always been red. Touching baby birds will make the mother reject them. Not that you should be touching wild animals anyway. This one is also not true. You swallow eight spiders a year in your sleep. Hey, dude, where the f*** are you sleeping that spiders are going in your mouth? The temple of doom? This one is definitely... Not true. You have to wait 24 hours to report a missing person. You don't. You can report them missing like right away. If you swallow gum, it takes seven years to digest. No, it doesn't. Drug dealers give out free drugs to kids to get them hooked. No. This ain't Costco. It ain't no one giving out free drugs. Not true. The average human only uses 10% of their brain. Again, this is not true. I honestly think a lot of people use less. Men think about sex every seven seconds. Not true, we definitely don't. And I never think about sex, because I, for one, am a good Christian virgin. Shaving will make your hair grow back thicker. Look at me, look at me, look at me, look at me. Not true. Okay, good idea or dumb idea? If you've ever struggled getting creepy crawlies out of your house, this is exactly what you need. Once the bug has been captured, it's simply a case of walking outside and setting it free. I don't know, it just... It just seems a lot cheaper to use my flip-flop. Like, I feel like if I had one of these cup of bugs, I would just use it to beat the shit out of the bug. Like, a venomous spider wouldn't give me that courtesy. He wouldn't be like, oh, I'll just trap him in some Tupperware and put him outside, he'll be fine. No, a venomous spider wouldn't hesitate to bite the shit out of you if it needed to. Like, I like the idea. I like that they're trying to be humane about it, but there are some bugs that I would just... <laughs> So this is gonna make some people mad, but these are some things we need to stop putting on our cars. Okay, first up we have the decal of Calvin peeing. I mean, these are just tacky. Plus he's like a little kid, like, ugh. Any sticker or decal with a politician's name on it. I hate to say it, but if you have a politician's name anywhere on your car, you got suckered. Our social media info. I might have to follow some of these people just to tell them they're a turd. Any kind of giant flag. What the hell, what are you in the color guard? We need a big ass flag for. Those Stickers that say, my kid beat up your honor student. Yeah, that's solid parenting there. It should really say, my kid's an idiot, so I taught him to be violent. Those special headlights that are blinding as f If you have these on your car, everyone hates you. Any kind of sound system I can hear while I'm in my house. If I can hear your music outside and it's louder than my TV inside, it's too damn loud. Also, your favorite rapper sucks. Those like stickers with the anime girls on them. Yeah, these are harmless, but they're, they're pretty cringy. And I'm getting rage. Of all the crazy things I've seen on TikTok, this might be like S tier level f***ed up. So this TikToker here fakes his own death and then shows up to the funeral in a helicopter. So these people gathered around here, I guess they're all his like family and friends. And here you can see there he is showing up in the helicopter like, hey, it's a surprise, I'm not dead. It cannot be. And there you see people running up to him, they're giving him hugs and stuff. And of course this wouldn't be complete without the cameraman here to film everyone's funeral grief. And this happened in Belgium, by the way, so shout out to Belgium. So, uh... Don't do that. That is bad. Now, is this whole prank staged? Well, at first I thought it was staged, but it's actually gotten enough news coverage that I think it's probably real. Now, apparently his wife and kids knew about it, but everyone else at the funeral didn't. Okay, pranking your friends is one thing. Like, oh, you told me there was water in the glass, but there's no water in the glass. But grieving from death is a heavy emotion to be manipulating in people. So why did this guy pull such a messed up prank? Well, he claims it's because his family never invites him to anything. And he wanted to see who really cares cares about him. Well, gee, I can't think of a single reason why his family would want to avoid him. And also, I thought the guy was like 19 or 20. Dude is 45 years old. He literally has a grandkid on the way. Now, I don't know what the age cutoff is for a faking your death for views prank on TikTok, but I feel like it's at least 45. Okay, the top eight 
best American foods. All right, number eight, we have biscuits and gravy. It's hard for any restaurant to mess this up. Order this anywhere in the United States and it will likely slap. Number seven, buffalo wings. These are amazing, but it greatly depends on the establishment you get them from. Trust me, I've had some busted ass wings before. Number six, green bean casserole. Why? Why is this so damn good? I mean, this is a combination of things I wouldn't normally eat, but damn! Number five, chocolate chip cookies. Slaps, but only if they are freshly baked. None of that Chips Ahoy bulls. Number four, grilled cheese. There's a debate on whether or not grilled cheese is American. I mean, it's cheese on bread. Who the f invented that? Doesn't matter, still slaps. Number three, fresh cornbread with butter. Just get in my mouth right now. Number two, pulled pork. I've never in my life had bad pulled pork. I mean, this pretty much goes for any barbecue. F***ing slaps. And number one, and this is the most controversial answer I'll ever give. Tex-Mex. And I know you're like, Ray, but Tex-Mex is Mexican. No, it's an Americanized version of Mexican food. You can't get Tex-Mex in Mexico, so I'm officially claiming it as American. And, and, it slaps harder than authentic Mexican food. Yeah, yeah, I said it. And I won't be taking any further questions. Thank you. Okay, smash or pass? Okay, it looks like a cheeseburger on top of some fries. Oh, oh, what are you doing? No, that's too many carbs. What are you, oh, and the ketchup. Oh, the, ooh, the bacon's nice. What the hell is all that? I don't know, I mean, maybe we don't need to combine all that food at once, like some kind of culinary Avengers. It's stuff like this that gives me trust issues. I mean, look at that. It looks like the way I pack my leftovers as I'm leaving a restaurant. What do you even call this thing? An whole casserole? And why stop there? As long as you're adding stuff, why not throw in some pig's feet? Maybe some Skittles. And in case you're wondering, yes, I would still eat this, but not because it's well made. It's because I'm a glutton who has no self-control. I love that people are still making these kind of TikToks. I'm just gonna face my show. I don't like anyone else. This has got to be the weirdest flex that people do. You like invent an enemy, this imaginary person who's trying to touch your girl, and then you make a TikTok threatening this enemy you just invented. Oh, you think you're going to touch my girl? Let me make a TikTok real quick. Now, I don't normally threaten people or whatever, but when I do, it doesn't usually involve setting up a tripod. Come on, just hold the camera while I walk down the stairs, Trevor. I mean, are there really people out there who are like, yo, I was going to touch his girl until I saw him walking in slow motion with that vintage filter. Okay, things that used to be respected and now they aren't. Kanye. We all used to love Kanye. What the hell happened to Kanye? Facebook. Believe it or not, Facebook used to be like prestigious. Like back when it was reserved for college students only. Now everyone's crusty old aunt uses it to share cringy ass memes. Flying in an airplane. Motherfuckers used to put on a whole ass business suit before they got on a flight. Now we got stuff like Spirit Airlines, which is like the Waffle House of the sky. The History Channel. I mean, they used to teach actual history on that channel. Now it's all conspiracy theory bullshit and aliens. The same thing could be said for TLC and MTV. Ugh, hate it. Elon Musk. People used to say this guy was the real life Tony Stark. Now he's just kind of a turd. The Guinness Book of World Records. The Guinness Book used to be like world's tallest woman, world's fastest man. Now it's stuff like most number of candles extinguished by farting, which is an actual Guinness record, by the way. Journalism. I mean, there's still good journalists out there, but it feels like it's all just clickbait now. The United States. I know my fellow Americans don't want to hear this, but we used to be admired around the world. Now we're largely seen as an example of what not to do. Like ask someone who's not from here how they see the United States. Like it's upsetting. If you could tell me how expensive you think calling an ambulance out in America. A hundred dollars, two hundred dollars. Two and a half grand. Is Gen Z really difficult to work with? So, a new resume builder survey of 1,300 plus managers and business leaders revealed 74% found that those people who are 26 and younger tend to be the most challenging to work with. What are some of the top reasons? A lack of technological skills, that one surprised me. Hmm. Lack of motivation, they're easily distracted, easily offended, and dishonest. What a bullshit survey. Like, I can't even believe this was a news story. Breaking news, old people think young people are lazy. Story at 11. Might as well be breaking news, old man yells at clouds. And I especially like that it said that they're easily offended. They're easily distracted, easily offended. Oh boy, you can't even slap a coworker on the ass these days. You can't even honk a woman's boob without the woke Gen Z getting offended. 
Okay, but here's the truth of the whole thing. Most of these companies would lay you off in a heartbeat if it affected their bottom line. And Gen Z knows that. They might even be the first generation to enter the workforce knowing that. I'm not telling you to be lazy on someone else's dime, but a lot of these companies don't give a damn about you and it's perfectly acceptable to not give a damn back. How could someone own one of these? Hey, what the hell is that? This whole thing is a shit show. But that is disgusting. Can you imagine what color that would turn after a short while? Like a reddish, yellowish brown? It's like when you leave spaghetti in the Tupperware for too long. Someone said this is probably Cinderella's toilet. I, I can't. It's too funny. Okay, the only way I will accept the existence of this toilet is if it's for educational purposes. Like to show kids in a science class how the inner workings of a toilet function or something like that. Otherwise, this is fucking weird. All right, what do you think of this? AI powered shoes. These shoes allow you to walk at the speed of running. These are moonwalkers, AI powered electric shoes that make walking faster and easier. With these shoes, you simply walk as normal. The shoes will analyze your performance and send the results to the eight motorized wheels on the bottom, controlling their speed. They require no extra skills beyond walking, so it won't take you long to pick up the knack. Y'all just invented roller skates with extra steps. Boy, you know you're a lazy turd when walking is too much for you. This must be what Jason uses in the Friday the 13th movies to chase down his victims. Cause that mother walks fast. <laughs> Yeah, I bet these are all fun and games until you gotta walk down a flight of stairs. Then what? Okay, I could see this invention working for like someone who's asthmatic or someone who needs assistance, but for the rest of us, get off your ass and walk. Your lazy ass is eventually gonna turn us into the big people from Wally. -E. Okay, tell me, what would you do if your house was invaded by crickets? I swear it's just getting worse and worse. It is disgusting. They are literally everywhere. Our entire neighborhood is flooded with these things. Our whole town is. What in the biblical plague is going on here? Well, this is scary as hell. This is like some kind of cricket horror movie. Like, I'm not specifically afraid of crickets, but there is a threshold amount that I can tolerate. Like five crickets, that's not that scary. A hundred crickets, that's a little more scary. But this, like this amount of crickets? Hell, hell no. no. It is time to burn down that entire town. And here's the most interesting part. So as you can see from the caption, these are actually called Mormon crickets, which makes sense because they just, you know, randomly show up on your porch. Do you have a moment to talk about the Lord? Okay, but this actually gets worse. I was reading that you can't actually kill these crickets because crickets will sometimes eat other dead crickets. They're the cannibals. <laughs> so if this happens to you, you kind of just have to wait it out until they migrate elsewhere. Ah, people really will get on camera and just say anything, won't they? If you're craving dairy, cheeses, you know, I don't know, milks, you're craving mother uh, very often. This woman really woke up and said, I'm going to say some bullshit on camera today. <laughs> oh, but it's not over. It gets worse. If you are craving baked goods or gluten, Usually what you're craving is the energy of your father. Subconsciously, when you're reaching out for that piece of baguette, you are craving the nurturing of your father or his energies in your life. Again, whether he's present or not present, right? There's something about that craving that leads you back to your father. So like what, my parents are made of carbs? <laughs> what, is she like the Sigmund Freud of dietary advice? I don't know, I've never eaten a slice of meat lover's pizza and said, hmm, you know what would go really well with this? My dad. And what if I'm lactose intolerant? What well, does that mean I don't deserve a mother? And when I have diarrhea, does that represent a broken family? And what if I'm craving a big fat eggplant in my mouth? What? <laughs> Whose attention am I craving then? So if I eat cheese, I'm craving my mother. No. If anything, I'm craving your mother. Doing your- I don't normally make this kind of video, but this comes up a lot in my life. So here's why I'm never having kids. Okay, first off, kids are expensive. I mean, kids are expensive and I'd rather spend that money on things that make me happy, like my animation projects and such. I'm kind of a nut job. Honestly, I'm a little bit crazy and I don't want to pass any of those traits on to another generation. Kids themselves. Have you met kids? There are a lot. It feels unfair. Like it feels unfair to bring a kid into this world right now. Like with the economy and climate change, like the future is looking a little bleak. 
week. Kids take up time. Any parent will tell you kids are really, really time consuming. And I'd rather spend that time doing something that makes me happy. Gaming. Look, I have one gaming console and I'm gonna be the one that plays it. My wife. Like, I love my wife a lot and I love spending time with her and I wouldn't want anything to interrupt that time and I feel like having kids would interrupt my time with her. The screaming. You know that high-pitched screaming that kids do when they run around the pool? <laughs> Ugh, just throw me in front of a bus. And most importantly, I have no desire to be a parent. It's just that feeling is not there, and it's never been there. And honestly, it never will be there. Also, I recently got a vasectomy, so there's that. And by the way, I'm not trying to upset parents here. None of this is to say that you shouldn't have kids or anything like that. You do you, boo-boo. That's on you. I know that makes a lot of people happy. It's just not for me. So what happens when a cop pulls over another cop. So this happened in Florida, because of course it did. A sheriff's deputy pulls over another police officer for speeding. What? Do you... I am going into work, my man. Why are you trying to pull me over as I am going Cause into work? Because you're going 80 and a 45. I am going into work. Okay, where are you going what to work What does it look for? like I am dressed for? I have What no... does it look like I am dressed for? My name is Deputy Hilton and they see your driver's license. No. Okay. Tim, for I got a city odd. Uh... Orlando PD taken off from a traffic stop. See, it's turds like this that give cops a bad name. Like, if a cop asked for my driver's license and I just walked away, you know exactly what would happen to me. Ow, 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 ow. And notice how the officer just jumps out of the car all mad, raising his voice. What? Do you... I am going into work, my man. Again, if you or I got pulled over and got all annoyed and jumped out of our car yelling at the cop, you know exactly what would happen to us. And by the way, shout out to the deputy for holding that other cop accountable. We need more officers like him, because nobody's above the law. So, what ultimately happened to the cop who sped away? Well, according to the news, he was charged with reckless driving and a firing. <laughs> Are you ready for some drama? <laughs> oh my god, I'm so sorry! Why'd you punch my girlfriend? I didn't. She you have it on camera. <laughs> you just got your arm off. I have it on camera. I have, I have it on camera. You know what? I'll beat the out of you. Oh my god. You know what? I'll beat the out of you. You assault people. I did You're going to punch my girlfriend. I'm not on camera. I did You know what? I'm going to the house. You don't move. I'm going to punch you. You punch my girlfriend. Don't run away. Okay, first of all, sick slide, bro. Nice. Second of all, the woman was being a bit karen by like sticking her arms out and trying to keep the cyclist from invading her space. However, that yellow shirt dude is kind of a f***ing psychopath. Oh, Karen here didn't punch the girlfriend. It looks like she touched her with an open hand. And the girlfriend even laughed about it. <laughs> so there's no reason to turn into a maniac and threaten to beat this woman up. You know what? I'll beat the f*** out of you. Yeah, sure, old women act like Karen sometimes, but that's no reason to threaten them with violence. Like, I'm 100% sure he wouldn't have made that same threat to a man. And I was gonna be like, and you shouldn't be riding your bike on the sidewalk, it's not legal. But it turns out that law actually varies from city to city. And I don't know what city they're in, so I don't know if it's legal for them to be riding on the sidewalk or not. My point is, everyone in this video kind of sucks, but that guy sucks more. So what do you think of this? Robot waiters. I got served by robot waiters in this Tokyo cafe. Futuristic and cool, yes, but what makes this place so worth a visit is that the robots are controlled remotely by people with disabilities who can't physically come into work but want to stay connected to society. Shaping a more inclusive future, this is Dawn Avatar Robot Cafe. You want to know what's messed up? I saw this video on Instagram and the comments were all like, hear me out. No, I will not be hearing you out, sir. I swear half y'all want robots to take over just so you can sexually harass them without getting me too So I know it's easy to sit here and say AI is bad and robots are bad and they took our germs. They took your job. They took your job. And you might be right. I mean, soon you might see a robot influencer taking my job. Hey guys, don't forget to smash the like button. But the way they're doing it at this restaurant feels like the right way to do the robot AI thing as a way to help humans, not as a way to replace them. My only issue with this is they seem to move slow as hell. Like, look at that, like, hurry up with my margarita, robo t What are some TV villains that are so good you want to just punch them in the face? But you can't because, you know, they're really just actors. Here's my list. First up, we have Umbridge from Harry Potter. I hate Umbridge so much, she should have been the main villain instead of Voldemort. I will die on that hill. Like, every scene she's in, just her face just sucks. 
the, the character, not the actor. You deserve to be punished. Next up, we have Samuel Jackson's character from Django Unchained. Samuel L. 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 Jackson nailed this role. Like he was such a narc, such a traitor, I hate him. It was so satisfying watching this character die. You open it, son of a Joffrey from Game of Thrones. First of all, f Joffrey. Second of all, f Joffrey. And also, f Joffrey. I hate him. I'm telling mother. Oh. Nate from Euphoria. Nate is such a turd of a human being. And honorable mention, Nate's dad, also a turd of a human being. Both actors did phenomenal in this show. Because I hate him. I really f hate you. I know. Homelander from The Boys. This cocky son of a he makes me so angry, I just, I, but I don't want him to die because I want him to come back in the next season so that I can feel angry again. Hate him. I legitimately enjoy hating Homelander. I really do. This must be some kind of a joke. Also, Stormfront from The Boys. Like, I hate Stormfront so much. Like, she's probably the most charismatic n you'll ever see on TV. I lose sleep at night over how much I hate Stormfront. Open your eyes. I like to see the light go out. And last but not least, Negan. They made Negan so perfectly hateable. Like, just his smile, his face. Ugh. Then they went and tried to give him like a redemption arc. Like, you can't, I can't like him now. I hate him too, you made him too hateable. You think you could ever do this? $15,000 if you complete a full night's sleep above this waterfall. Okay, here's why I wouldn't. Okay, one, I don't know if I sleepwalk, but that would be one hell of a way to find out. <laughs> Two, what if you have to pee? Will you just like go off the side? <laughs> Three, if I did make it through the night, I'd probably wake up with mosquitoes and birds all over me. <laughs> like I might agree to do this if they agree to attach a bungee cord to my ankle. So is someone really offering $15,000 to sleep here? So I looked on every corner of the internet and I couldn't find anything about any company or any person offering 15 grand to sleep on a bed above a waterfall. So someone probably just found this video and added this caption. Disappointed! Ah, <sighs> TikTok pranksters. Today, I'm gonna take a fing sh Okay, to be fair, this is how most of us feel after Chipotle. Now this definitely isn't the worst prank I've seen, like it actually got a chuckle out of me. Not a full-blown guffaw, but you know, a chuckle. Okay, but here's my problem with it. Eventually, the Chipotle employees have to stop doing the job that they're doing, and they have to go find him in the bathroom and escort his ass out. I had a bad stomach ache. I had a bad stomach ache. And I'm sure that's all part of his plan, to capture them on camera doing that. But these minimum wage employees don't necessarily want to be part of your TikTok prank. That's not what they're there for. That's not what they're at work to do. They didn't ask to be on camera, and it might even be humiliating for them on some level. So, I, I don't know, kind of a funny prank, but I just, I wouldn't do it. It's, it's shitty. No, no pun intended. By the way, these restaurants should start adding. So this one is actually pretty cool. So these guys were seen driving around Brooklyn, New York in a backwards 2003 Ford Ranger. <laughs> Okay, but like, is this even legal? Well, look, I don't really know, but I doubt it. Here's why. Assuming they swap the headlights and taillights, they would still need proper side mirrors. Which they have, but see, they're on backwards making this car not street legal. Also, by law, you need like frontal airbags, which I doubt they have. Can you imagine an airbag going off behind you? <laughs> So why would someone make a truck like this? So this appears to be some kind of art installation by the artist Pippa Garner. She did a similar backwards car thing back in the 70s. But this would have been an amazing YouTube prank. The fact that this is some kind of art piece and not a YouTube prank is frankly just nuts. So this guy sucks. Look, I don't know this guy's name, but let's just call him Edward Pillowhands. So why is Edward Pillowhands so mad? Well, allegedly, this is over a traffic dispute. Road rage, of course. He apparently hit the person's car with his car, and then when they pulled over, he ran up and started punching their window like a f***ing maniac. Oh boy, he sure showed that glass who's boss, didn't he? Look at that, this is how I punch in my dreams. I don't know if I'm more impressed by how strong the glass is or by how weak his punches are. <clears throat> 
And of course, Edward Pillowhands didn't stop punching until his wife stepped in and it looks like she pulled him away. And presumably, Edward went home and did the same thing to her. Okay, that was dark. Now, I know this guy probably thinks he's all manly with his massive pickup truck, but that's got to be the most effeminate run I've ever seen. So did this guy get caught? Well, his car had Canadian plates on it, so they think this turd was some kind of Canadian tourist. But as of this video, no, he has not been caught yet. And here, I thought Canadians were supposed to be polite, eh? No, not for all the money in the world. Rich people shit. Billionaire shit. Rich people shit. See, these are the kind of people who pay extra money to see the Titanic wreckage up close. Did we or did we not just see a bunch of billionaires do some dangerous shit in a mini sub and then get crushed? Are we not done with paying money for these sort of ideas? Oh, and here's the best part. You know what really mixes well with dangling hundreds of feet in the air from a crane? Alcohol. Yeah, yeah I'm sure that's bound to end well for someone. <laughs> and what if you need, like, I don't know, service? Hey, waiter, could you bring me... Oh. There's no one up here. Also, I'm just gonna point this out, because sometimes it's fun to be a d but the view they paid for is not all that great. Like, ain't shit, but a bunch of trees. And I'm pretty sure I saw an unpaved parking lot back there. So this is gonna make you mad. The cars would not stop honking when I was making my aesthetic crossing the street video. Can you actually that I'm making a video? I don't care, stop. No, I have to mean. finish that video. It's oh green. Oh my god, these cars are driving me crazy. It's, it's green, right? So yeah, she's blocking traffic to get some kind of, I, I don't know, aesthetic shot. And she appears to be clueless about how self-centered she's being. The one side is on now. Now I don't even want to do it because it's not. I don't know why he's honking at me. Oh my god, okay, I'm just going to redo the whole video. But here's the most interesting part. There's actually kind of layers to this. She is not clueless to how self-centered she's being. She knows how awful she's being, but she captions her videos and pretends to be dumb so that we watch it and we all get mad at her. And then, of course, once we're mad at her, we engage with the video. It's classic rage bait. And this method appears to be working for her as it works for a lot of influencers. We can call it the Jake Paul method. In fact, I'm not convinced she was holding up traffic at all. I'm pretty sure those horn honks were dubbed in as they seem to be in a repeating pattern. So then we gotta ask ourselves, what's worse? Her legitimately holding up traffic or her pretending that she held up traffic just to make us mad? Well, this guy sucks. TikTok, please find this person. They and their two friends have been harassing different Starbucks locations throughout the Feedy District in this. Wow, this went from Starbucks to Waffle House real quick. First of all, why does this guy look like that guy from that meme? I mean, this dude looks like he's about to tell me to hide my kids, hide my wife. Oh, but the video keeps going. I mean, this shit gets real when the dude picks up the napkin holder. <laughs> Did one of those employees just yell, I will make your ass straight? I will make your ass straight, motherfucker. Yeah, I don't know if that's how that works. Yo, I will fuck you until you're no longer gay, bro. Yeah, like this whole video is so chaotic. I don't even know who to blame. My guess is the guy tearing up the store and demanding everyone clean up after him is the real jerk. Okay, but here's the real question. How do you cause a scene like that and then your two friends just walk out with you like nothing happened? Who's the more foolish? The fool or the fool who follows him? If I acted like that in front of my friends, they would immediately tell me I was wrong and then they'd probably... <coughs> This is probably the funniest thing I've seen all year. You know how TikTokers will film themselves committing a crime and then they'll upload it? Well, this finance influencer got on camera and bragged about his own credit card fraud. What if I told you there was a way to buy things like this $100,000 watch without spending a single dollar of your money using business credit like this that you never actually had to pay back? Let me just interrupt to say, I don't think that's a $100,000 watch. And I know nothing about watches, but I just, I have a sinking feeling he's bullshitting. I went and opened business credit cards in that account I then proceeded to go on, buy this for $100,000. I'm going to turn around and sell it to a jeweler for $80,000 in cash, which now gives me the cash. All right, let's be clear about this. What he's describing is illegal. It's fraud. Oh, but it gets better. Then, of course, his video blows up and everyone in the comments starts calling him out. Like, bro, don't you know that's super illegal? You're going to jail, dude. Don't drop the soap. So then the guy had to make a separate follow-up video like, no, no, guys, I was just trolling. That was just a prank. You see, I wasn't being serious. Now I was commenting, fraud this, fraud that, fraud this, but there's no proof of me for anything because it was all complete bullshit. 
I wasn't really getting on camera telling you guys how to commit business fraud. No, no. And maybe that's true, but his whole online persona appears to be finance influencer bro. And if you're a finance influencer, don't get on camera and be like, here's some financial advice. Commit fraud. That'd be like if a pickup artist was like, here's a way to pick up women. Chloroform! So ultimately, it looks like TikTok took his whole account down. And I don't know why, uh, maybe it's because he appeared to be teaching people how to commit white collar crimes. That might have something to do with it. So this is just terrible. So these influencers here get this bright idea to walk into a stranger's house as a prank. <laughs> Is this right, where the study group is? Study no, group. no. What the is this? No. Okay, let's set aside how disrespectful this is for just a second. I sometimes exaggerate things for laughs, but no exaggeration, this could have easily ended in death. And I don't think the punishment for TikTok pranks should be death. Either way, don't walk into a stranger's f***ing house. And like, I don't know the laws in the UK, but I'm pretty sure this is illegal. Like, everywhere. You're pretty much just documenting a home invasion. And the guy sat on the family's couch? Man, get your stank ass off that couch. That's just, that's just awful. Yeah, don't, don't do this. This is not a prank. This is just someone being an internet a like, how far are these pranks gonna go? Like, hey, look, guys, I interrupted someone's heart surgery. <laughs> All right, so supposedly, this guy bet $10,000 on the Super Bowl and lost. No! All right, so my bullshit meter is going crazy. Here's why. If you look close, the TV's still got a yellow sticker in the bottom corner. Like, they just bought it and are gonna return it. It was broke like that when we got it. Plus, it wasn't even mounted to the wall, even though it has wall mounts on it. Like, they wanted him to be able to pull it down. Even the way the guy gets mad and moves, it's like a cartoony Kevin Hart-type temper tantrum. Like, it's put on. You don't understand? Yo, bet, hey, yeah. hey, you pay me, mate. I've seen versions of this video where they say it was a $50 bet, some say it was a $10,000 bet. It doesn't matter. Either way, it is fake. That's just a load of crap. What are you supposed to do with a bed like this? Rich people sh billionaire sh rich people sh trillionaire sh rich people sh gazillionaire sh if you had a blood Oh, yeah, okay, that's cool and all, but where is bro driving to? What, the kitchen to get a beer? Like, it's not like you could drive that thing out on the freeway. <laughs> or are we gonna see homeboy in his bed going through the Arby's drive-thru? Can I take your order? I'm not gonna lie, if I had kids and that bed, I would use it to run over my kids. <laughs> that's f***ed up. Just do. What is this You definitely don't want to get into a fight with this guy. This mother tricking me! Come on, bro, I'm ready! Let's go right now! So you don't have to fight? Me, you don't have to fight? You can do all that, right. just don't touch me, bro. Let's go right now! I'm ready, bro! Let's go! You don't know what the f you're dealing with, bro! You don't know who you're dealing with! Is he trying to fight or did he just challenge everyone to a dance battle? I think bro did an actual spin move. Can someone please make him a Mortal Kombat character? Come on, bro, I'm ready. See, I wouldn't normally be intimidated by him, but the leggings he's wearing make me fear for my life. Your pants are so tight, you got frog eye. <laughs> so this guy goes into Walmart and all the checkout registers are closed. What you're telling me is that the registers close at eight o'clock. Yes. And that uh, you would rather me take all those groceries right there and just leave them in the cart and leave the store than to have somebody ring them out for me. Well, unfortunately, at the moment, we only have about, I'd say, two people let myself check out, and the rules are, you can't have one people over there, they have a whole line, it'll be too busy. Okay, well, I'm not gonna ring it out. That's not, that's not my job. I, I'm a paying customer, I came here to pay for things, yeah. right? But I didn't come here to work. I'm sorry, this is like the most boomer energy ever. The gentleman in the blue vest is not the f 
messiah of Walmart. He's a cashier. It is not his fault that he has to abide by the store's policy. So there is no reason to film him and blast him all over TikTok like he did something wrong. Like I know waiting in line sucks, but this guy acts like his one purchase is the glue holding the entire Walmart corporation together. And I especially love how the caption says, I'll never spend another dollar at Walmart. We know damn good and well he'll be back at that store in two weeks complaining about something else. Okay, good idea or bad idea? Everyone clap. Let's see here. Trampoline, 15 feet in the air, next to a glass railing. Put our kids on it. What could go wrong? <laughs> Also, a part of me thinks this is supposed to be a hammock and not a trampoline, especially considering it's right next to all that shelving on the left. Who puts a trampoline next to a bunch of bookshelves? Someone who doesn't read, that's who. So with this one, I gotta go with, uh, bad idea. Stupid! Okay, take a guess. How much do you think this steak costs? So this is in Dubai, and I guess they bring it out in, like, a briefcase, and there's these, like, fake armed security cards in front of it, and it's, like, covered in gold tinfoil. <laughs> This seems like a lot of showmanship just for someone to cover that steak and catch up. Also, what if someone sends it back? Uh, I asked for this medium well. Do the men with guns then have to come back a second time? And if your kid orders chicken fingers off the kids menu, do they also bring that plate out at gunpoint? And here's the real question. Do they really need to feed it to you in such a homoerotic way? Like, look at that. It's like they're feeding an orca at SeaWorld. I've got a little snack for you. Okay, so how much does that steak actually cost? Well. According to the restaurant's menu, it cost about 250 US dollars, which is expensive, but cheaper than what I expected. I mean, if you really want to eat something tasty wrapped in gold tinfoil, eat a Reese's peanut butter cup.